Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional. I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is the show where we look at the cool tech and science from all your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, comic books, all that great pop culture stuff, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Well, last week I had the fabulous Chris Williams on from Ancestry.com, also quite the renowned ghost hunter, to talk about the parentage of Joffrey Baratheon. And could Ned Stark have proven his lineage otherwise? Was Ned Stark just sticking his neck out for nothing? That's what I wanted to know. And you guys had lots of comments. Uh, C. Nelson said they all had black hair, to which Chris actually wrote back and replied on YouTube. She said they all could have black hair, but it depends on both parents and the genes or traits they carry. My aunt and uncle both had dark brown hair like me, but they have two blonde children. That means they both carried the recessive gene for blonde hair, which then showed in their children. So there is still the possibility that Robert is Joffrey's dad. It sounds weird, but it is possible. So strike another one down for Ned in that journey for knowledge, which ended poorly. But no spoilers, right guys? <laughs> right? No spoilers. This week, we have the fantastic Ben Heck on this show, and we're going to be talking about a topic that I have wanted to discuss for a really long time, ever since the most recent movie came out, in fact. But we were just waiting for the right person, and Ben is that guy. Of course, we are talking about the Iron Man suit. Could it be real or not? So Ben, thank you so much for joining us. I, I can't believe we haven't been on a show together before. I mean, we've been on the same network forever. I know, the statistic and probability of that is very high. Very but strange. That's life. Well, I've been meaning to do an episode on the Iron Man suit forever, and obviously you are one of the perfect people to talk to, especially with your experience with modding. Um, so I'm curious to know your opinion on how the suit has kind of changed over the years. So kind of how it's changed. You know, in the first movie, you know, he's got all those robot arms in his, uh, you know, his garage, which is amazing. And uh, it puts a suit on for him. You know, it kind of looks like a, a car factory, even though. Well, cars are mostly built by hand. It's kind of a misconception that robots build everything. But, you know, it's like, oh, it's like a car factory. <laughs> Puts it all on. And then, so it's like, you know, he, he has to do it. You know, he has to just kind of like stand there and hope for the best. And then, you know, in the first movie, it's so great. He goes over, fights the terrorists or whatever, and he comes back. And the suit won't come off because it's been, you know, shot up. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what would happen. It would not come off because it's all bent and stuff. That was very, very realistic. But then, yes, as the movies proceed, they have to make it more complicated and more filmic, so to speak. And so the engineering got a little bit more, you know, fantastical, so to speak, but I still love them. So it was almost like it, it was realistic in the beginning, and then do you think it was because of audience expectations of wanting to see something even more spectacular as the movies progressed that made uh, it more more fantastical? It's probably more from a screenplay point of view, uh, you know, they're like, oh, we want, he's gonna fight this guy and he's got that suitcase suit, which is an awesome special effect, but it's completely engineered, it's, it, it's impossible. Maybe it's like aliens built it or something. Let's compare the Iron Man suits to things that we're seeing uh, from the government, for example. Like we've seen some exoskeleton type devices, uh, you know, from DARPA and from the military. Um, how, how do those compare to an actual Iron Man suit? Most of the fiction with Iron Man revolves around his power source. You know, he's got that thing in his chest and arc reactor, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it just assumes that he has unlimited power, which would run a suit. Of course, in rea reality, the power source of anything, let's use an electric car for an example, that's the major limiting factor. You know, like what happens to electric cars if you've got like 400 pounds of battery and it's still not as efficient as 100 pounds of gasoline, which is just the technology catching up. So that's a big difference. Um, there's no reason you couldn't make a really strong, it'd probably be pneumatic, not motorized, but a really strong suit. You know, you just have a soldier or whoever with a big, you know, 10 generators, you know, they'd be lugging that along, along as well. It's mostly a, a kind of a power issue. For me, the Iron Man suits kind of seem like a combination between something like a, a military exoskeleton that's providing an extra layer of shielding and also something like a battle mech that we would see from like video games where they really are much larger uh, vehicles almost. Uh, but those make a little more sense in terms of the power supply because those would have some kind of way to, to power themselves versus a smaller suit-like device that really doesn't have a lot of storage for that kind of thing. First of all, you know, when the suit opens up and whatnot, you wouldn't have enough room for all the motors just to open it, let alone, you know, the motors to actuate the main thing. Like this, again, the first movie, that wasn't a problem, but it, it's so cool, like in part three, and he walks out of the bar and his suit's standing there like a motorcycle <laughs> along the road, and he gets into it, you know, and it closes. That's really cool, but I mean, you're basically tripling the weight just with all the things that close and open it. But again, it looks cool on screen. 
Um, as far as how that compares to like the Exosuits you're talking about, yeah, you know, if you have something larger, you'd have more room for the motors, you'd have more room for the batteries, and you know, the batteries to power it, those have a lot of weight. So not only you have to get past the weight of the batteries you're using to power it before you even get into the strength stuff. So in your opinion, how far away would we theoretically be from creating a suit like the one that Tony Stark has, if at all? Assuming we had a magical power source like he has? Yes. I don't know, the Tony Stark kind of suit, I don't know. You could do it now, but it wouldn't be realistic. Gotcha. Um, it's interesting to see with like the exoskeleton stuff and uh, not just for DARPA stuff, but uh, for rehabilitation, like if someone can't walk. Uh, now, I know we don't have any any Iron Man movies for sure on the horizon. I know there have been some whisperings about perhaps going back to it, or at least in a future Avengers movie. But what do you think they could possibly add to the suit going forward in the fictional world? I think it'd be cool, like, um, if he had one that came out of the trunk of his car, perhaps. Like, he pulls up with this really cool car, and, you know, like, he walks up and it's like, it comes out of his trunk, and, like, somehow attaches to him, like, you know, kind of like a portable thing. Ooh. You kind of need if um, the suit could repair itself, you know, 3D printing is like a big tech thing now. Like, he's like, oh, this, my glove has been blown off. See, I never understood the glove. If you were actually making a suit like that, you wouldn't have your fingers exposed because that would be far and away the most, you know, I don't care what he made. If you got hit with like a 50 caliber mortar, his hand would be gone. <laughs> so, you know, you, you put the hand inside of something and it would actuate another hand out here. Yeah. That's what I would do if I was building an Iron Man suit, because I like I like my hands attached. I really um, like the idea of a self-repairing Iron Man suit. I think that is really the next logical step, because so much of the last movie was taken up with repairing the damn thing. It seems like he would yeah. build that into the next iteration. Yeah, like maybe he could have like a little 3D printer in the back, and if they did it realistically, um, so instead of like magical, you know, liquid metal Terminator kind of stuff. Like nanobots. Yeah, see, that's like, no BS. But anyway, Ben, thank you so much. So I'm gonna say that this is probably in the realm of fictional. Right now, yes. Right now, yes, okay. And then if we did do it, it'd probably be more along the lines of either a an exoskeleton type thing, but losing some of the flight and, and, and battle properties that the Iron Man suit has, or we would go even larger, uh, wherein we would have the ability to have that power source and uh, actually use it for some kind of combat. Right, and if it, actually, if it was used for combat, it would even more likely be an autonomous, a remotely controlled suit, mm -hmm. because the space Robert Downey Jr. takes up, you can fit so many electronics yeah. in that space, it'd be better to have a basic, it's like when they talk about space travel, you know, it's a lot cheaper to send like a bunch of probes to Mars than to send a human, because that just makes it so much more complex. Same thing, keeping them safe in the suit, it'd be a lot easier just to send the suit out. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So Iron Man Tony Stark suit style, fictional. But for military uses, exoskeletons, for example, and patient rehabilitation, yeah, we're gonna give that one a fact at least in the near future, which is very, very cool. But speaking of movies and speaking of superheroes, have you guys seen the new Superman movie? I'm seeing it tonight, actually. Not tonight when the show is coming out, but tonight when we are shooting the show. And I'm still excited about it, even though the reviews have been kinda meh. Do you guys have any Superman questions or is that just way too fictional? But anyway, let me know what else you wanna see right here on the show. That's it for this week. If you wanna check out more episodes of Factor Fictional, make sure you head back to youtube.com slash techfeed every Friday. Until next time, I'm Veronica. See you later.